I've only had this little Jinhao 35 for three short days and already the cap won't cap anymore. And to boot the section here, well that just slips off. What happened to this thing in only three days? Let's talk about it. We have some fancy pens over here that can be quite expensive. You might think I'm a pen snob, but I totally have no problem at all with low price point pens as long as they're well made. One of my favorites is this guy right here, this zebra fountain pen, only three bucks. I did a review on this one and there's a lot of detail that went into this three dollar pen. So I ordered this five dollar Jinhao 35, really not so much for the pen because I wanted it, but I wanted a pen in stainless steel to start shooting with my laser. But I thought before I hit it with the laser, I might as well ink it up and give it a try. And I was pleasantly surprised. It's got this Lamy style nib on here. And it's an extra fine. I thought it'd be super scratchy. This is very well tuned, reasonably smooth. The tines were off just a bit. I just had to, you know, adjust one a, a touch. But but 15 seconds later, wrote like a dream, like a really, really nice extra fine nib. Wetness is good. I thought the styling was okay. It did have a very satisfying snap cap. But now the snapping is, is gone and it just, even in some cases, will pop right off. You got to get it just right. There it goes. And that starts popping off on its own. Uh, so let me talk about this. I mean, I've had this for three days and this is what the section already looks like. Looks like it's been used for three years and that still didn't really even bother me. I thought five bucks, stainless steel, relatively comfortable in the hand, lightweight. This is a great little EDC pen, you know, carrying around everywhere, or a travel pen or just a, a chuck it in your bag kind of pen because it wrote so well. The posting right away, I was like, oh, it doesn't, doesn't post, but you had to get it just kind of lined up right so i thought that was a a bit hokey but the the sealer that they have down there in the cap it was this you got to line it up just right to be able to post it so i thought well okay five bucks i'll 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 live with that but the back started to get scratched a bit too not too too bad but i was quite shocked how scratched up that section got it came with a converter it's not too bad. The threads on here are, I, I felt like they would hold up over time. They haven't gotten too chewed up yet in the thread profile in here. So I even thought the construction of this wasn't, wasn't terrible. It's, it's basically stainless steel tube. It gets parted off. They press in some of these other little bits here, like this end finial on here that just gets pressed in and the, <laughs> that comes off. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, same with the threads in here. This is a separate piece that gets pressed in. And you can do some things like even when this gets parted, cut to size, you don't have to even worry too much about the burrs because these are getting pressed in. So there's all these little cost saving measures on this pen that I thought were decent, but uh, they went too far with the cost savings. This should be at least a $10 or $15 pen for it not to be have all these challenges where it lasts a few days and then it comes apart. The cap is okay you know, fairly basic, but again, it's just a bunch of tube cut to length, parts get pressed in and, and you can, you, you can get this, these pieces of tubing are just like in the pennies, right? So I was actually quite excited about it because it wrote wonderfully, but then the cap started popping off and not capping too well. And then shortly after the section just started slipping off and now the capping doesn't work. Another thing that's a bit of a pain is uh, it rattles, right? So if you put the, uh, the body on like you're going to do and you drop it and it does make that sort of a rattle sound so that was driving me nuts but even still i was okay with that but i had it <laughs> when the one good feature of this pen which was this little beautiful little slip cap stopped working and the suction came off and then i got to look and they just didn't care at all about assembling this like you you it just looks like basic super glue on there and then you, you're going to glue onto this shiny stainless steel tube there's no surface preparation whatsoever. You can see nothing's bonding. It's totally smooth. Like this is not going to grab and bite. Even here, how that's folded over, that's, you can see that little edge there. All right. So th th that's even a really nice cost saving uh, feature when you're re putting this thing together. Because you got to come up with really low cost, cheap, effective ways to, to manufacture something at this price point. So how far should this slide on? Boom, right there. So that little taper there is going to dictate that distance. So all these little things I liked, but they just had to go ahead and just not care. <laughs> yeah, you need to like get proper adhesives on here. This just looks like drop, you know, uh, a drop of super glue, and you got to 
prepare that surface. They sure they have to know this stuff. But that's that's the challenge I find. When you get pens down in this price point level, it's like a race to the bottom. And if you want to win down there, so you, you sometimes you gotta you gotta give up a little bit of the quality. And they did that here. And I'm really disappointed because I'll write with it and all that stuff. I'll probably still shoot this with a laser. But I'm just kind of sad because this is I actually really like this. I even think if it if it didn't fall apart like this and stayed as it was, I would actually almost like it more than the Muji pen. Because this has made phenomenally well. They even dropped the price more. 15 bucks now uh, for this Muji fountain pen. And uh, I think it's a great little pen. Made similar kind of way. Just tubes and other parts just get pressed in here. So very, very good construction. But they did a fantastic job. This is aluminum. This is stainless steel. And it's uh, it's anodized. And it goes on the back here. Now the, the end here, it is susceptible to getting, you know, if you get smushed a little bit, it's a fairly thin wall. So now posting, I just gotta sort of twist the pen, but that's okay. But it's made exceptionally well, but the grip is a little slick. So that's been my only nag with this pen. And I wish if they made a version 2.0, I would request it to be a little, a little thicker version and better knurling on here, right? But other than that, this is a fantastic $15 pen. And if this was a $15 pen, it would be a fantastic pen. But instead they chose the price point they did. And now it's not a good pen at all. It, it came apart and the cap doesn't stay on. This it just annoys me. One benefit with how the pen caps, or I guess doesn't cap now, is you just do that and you can start your writing sample. We'll be writing with some thanks and love. Thanks and love to the little uh, Japanese stationery store at the mall. This one here, it's the Kiyowa. Oh, Kiyoa Shiko, made in Japan. No idea, I'm not saying this right, but uh, if you can read Japanese, there are the deets. I think it was maybe $2 or $3. Actually, the paper works quite well. I was even practicing with some flux. Looks like this was done with my uh, Pelican 140. So it even handled quite well. No, uh, no feathering, all that stuff. Bleed through, no bleed through, and show through barely any. So let's uh, use this paper. And so this is the saddest part because this little Jinhao 35 has a really nice nib on it. It writes perfectly. So and it's an extra fine nib um, Yeah, the wetness all that the tuning pretty darn good for five bucks I was impressed I can get a, a steel pen stainless steel pen, but then I wasn't expecting anything from the nib and it just Yeah, writes wonderfully. I was really really jacked about this excited to do the review and tell everyone of the new five dollar find of a pen I would totally recommend because I thought this you know, it's, the looks are half decent. It's not mind blowing, but for five bucks, you want to get into fountain pens. That's a good little try or, or someone you want to give someone a pen and see if they like fountain pens. But this, uh, yeah, just the cap won't stay on anymore. The section turns off. I'm writing it. It's tough to write with now because the section is just, it's spinning and turning as I write. So that's super annoying. So far, my favorite uh, low priced Jin Hao kind of pen around this price point. This is the 51A. And, uh, yeah, I think it's around the similar type of price. It's okay. It's not my absolute favorite. I was really hoping this other pen was going to take it over. But again, it writes it writes well. And I got no issues with it whatsoever. I am disappointed that in the cap here, they didn't do a stainless steel screw. It's just a regular... Oh, we can't see it. So that really disappoints me. Like, it, ugh, this camera disappoints me there i was watching the clock it took over a minute for me to get focused on that but yeah like just charge a dollar more and go with the stainless steel screw instead of one that's going to rust out outside of the rusty screw here at the top i think the jinhao 51a here it's a decent looking pen it looks a lot like a parker 51 of course uh, they don't really tend to make their own designs but uh it's a decent pen and i think it's it's a good Re fairly reliable pen for pens around that price point and my focus on my camera's garbage there we go and i think it's great to have pens at all price levels all price points if you got a lot of money to spend on pens and drop it a thousand bucks is your thing great if you need something and and you know five six bucks ten bucks yeah you can get great pens as well but what drives me nuts is when something's cheap right so and by that i just mean cheaply made this just if, if it's got to be a 10 or $15 pen, so it's not cheap, then make it a 10 or $15 pen. The, the race to the bottom for the price point is 
there's usually no winners in that scenario. There's, there's just too many concessions. You can be too ambitious for the features or materials you want at a given price point. And uh, yeah, if you just drive that price point too low, there's just too many things you got to not care about. And then we just end up with subpar pens that just aren't, aren't well made. And that's the, that's the part that drives me nuts when I say cheap pens. It's not, I, I'm poo-pooing low cost pens. This again, $3. I think this is made phenomenally well. There's some things on here that are made well, you know, even better. Like the little attention to details that are better than pens that are cost 20 times this pen. But I don't consider this cheap. It's low cost. This Jinhao, oh, 35. This is just cheap. I'm just going to leave it like that because the cap doesn't want to stay on anyway. So that is how you have to leave it. I don't even know if it deserves to get shot by a laser now because it's, it's just such a hunk of junk. So the pen of sadness, or as it's also known, the Jinhao 35. Um, if you got one and it didn't fall apart quickly, congratulations. I wish this pen didn't fall apart so quickly and was made so poorly. We'll leave it there.